which is, how did this come about? Exactly, the green is Islam. How did this happen? Most people have no idea. So we want to examine that. And on our next slide, we see that before, this is about the map of the Byzantine Empire, about the time that Muhammad's descendants, the Muslims, were going to burst out of uh, Arabia and invade the classical world. So this was what the, the classical empire, when the fall of Rome happened, is being reestablished. This is the Byzantine Empire. And on our next slide, we see what happened in 25 years after Islam invaded the classical world. How did they spread so far, so fast? North Africa, we also have the Middle East. How did this happen? The, a good explanation is generally not given. It collapsed so fast. And on our next slide, we see here what I call the first stage of classical annihilation. The Byzantine Empire is shrinking. We're, uh, Islam is pressed into uh, what's called Persia then in those days. And there's almost none, none of the classical left in North Africa. On our next slide, this is basically 100 years. This is a massive expansion. How did this happen so fast? This is like a collapse. Why did this happen? On our next slide, we, uh, this, you're going to witness something here in the sense of this is going to be a data-driven talk. This is going to be about facts. This is going to be about objective thought. That is, anybody else can do the same work that I've done. This is important. One of the things I want to do at CSPI is to teach people how not to use opinions, but to use facts. We want to use the, our intellect. We don't want to use emotions. There was a big book published, and when I say a big book, it was an 1,100-page history book called The Rise of the European Economy, A.D. 300 to A.D. 900. Now, that sounds like a very boring book, but it was fascinating. It was the first history book I ever read which does not have a story, all right? There's, and it even said so in the book, this is a narrative without a story. What had happened is, is that there had been a lot of research about the archaeological remains under the Mediterranean Sea. Now, it turns out one can learn a great deal about looking for shipwrecks beneath the ocean. Let me give you an example. The Mediterranean, particularly in the classical world, was very dangerous to sail on. So therefore, there was always a certain percentage of sailing ships which sank. So if in a certain time period you find a lot of ships, that tells us there was a great deal of trade. If there's a period in which you don't find ships, that means that there was not a lot of business going on. So we can learn a lot from what is left, the remnants of history. Now there was another kind of archaeology that's been done, and it was an archaeology about data. Old classical documents had been translated and then put into a massive database. And this was one of the most fascinating things. Because in the back of this book, in the appendix, were all these battles fought between Islam and the classical civilization. Now most people, even if they know a bit about history, they may know about Lepante, they may know about the fall of Constantinople, they may know about the invasion in Spain in 711, and that begins to be about all that most people I know who would consider themselves pretty good historians know about. Well, there was just battle after battle after battle. I was fascinated because I thought this was the insight that I'd been looking for to try to explain the Dark Ages and the rise of Islam. Well, once I took all the battles in the appendix out of this book, I then began to use the internet to do research, and I put together a database of 548 battles that Islam fought against the classical civilization. 548. Well, now what is I going to do? Because who wants to... If I sat here and started reading to you a list of 548 battles, you would head for the door. But we needed a way to display this, so I developed something which I called a dynamic battle map. Because what I want us to see is not what one battle did, but the sweep of history. So this is a strategic overview. 
This is what I'm calling, this is one frame from what a dynamic battle map is. I took the period that I had information, which was from A.D. 632 to 19 and 22, and divided it up into 20-year periods. So every time the map changes, it's another 20 years. And we see here that what we have in these white dots is the present day, call number two. So what we want to do is these are the new and current battles and then they are going to change to red, which means they're now in history. So we're going to build up with every 20 years an overlay of all these 548 battles. So now then, if we could play the first movie. Bang, the first 20 years. Look how fast this is happening. Battle after battle. And notice something. Islam is projecting power across the oceans, or the Mediterranean. Most people, when they think of Islam, think of Arabia, they think of deserts, and they think of camels. But this is the projection of naval power. Look how quickly North Africa fell, the invasion of Spain is there, and battle after battle every 20 years. Now one of the things that's happening with these invasions of the islands and invasions of the coastlines is there's going to be one million Europeans captured and taken into slavery. Think about that. This is not a history that most people like to think about or even know. You will notice that it is relentless. It is ceaseless. It goes on and on and on. Why is this? Because all of this was an imitation of Muhammad, the supreme warrior. He averaged an event of a battle every six weeks for the last nine years of his life. It was, he was relentless and the jihad was relentless. Now what's going to happen is, there's going to be, the green is going to disappear in uh, Spain. And look what's happened now. We've, yes, we're past the fall of Constantinople. And now then the Balkans are being hammered. And as you probably well know, they're going to get up to the gates of Vienna. This is the maximum expansion. And by the way, there are many battles going on in Africa. There are battles going on in Pakistan, Persia. I, I focus the ones just on the classical civilization of Europe. They have been criticized by Hindus and Zoroastrians and Buddhists that I have not included their battles. And what I tell them is, if you'll put together the database, I'll put it on my map. But I became exhausted by the work. Okay. Next slide. This is what I call the destruction of classical civilization. Next slide. Now what I've given you here is an exercise in quantity. This is the number of battles, but what I want to do now is there's a history of suffering that's going on here. So I then took and put together, these are sort of news of the day for century after century because we not only want to understand how many battles there were, but what was the quality of this work. And so here we have the uh, 7th century. The Jazima tribe was, uh, Muhammad sent Khalid, the sword of Allah, to the Jazima tribe to offer to them an invitation to come to Islam. They said, no, we don't want to do that. So he destroyed them down to the last man, woman, and child. Then we have an event in the Battle of Oasis in Iraq, where after the battle was over, Khalid, the sword of Allah, brought forth the chieftain who survived the battle and brought forth his wife. He then cut off the chieftain's head, soaked the blood, and then took the wife and raped her on top of the blood of her husband. It turns out that we will study a little bit about the doctrine of jihad, and it includes the doctrine of uh, the rape. Here we also have that the Jerusalem fell, and Christians and Jews were made dimmies. These are sort of half citizen, not a half citizen, semi-slaves. In the next century, notice something here. I start here by saying that this is the first century of the Golden Age. 
Surely all of you have heard of the golden age of Baghdad. So this, the next few centuries, I'm going to show you what was happening, not only in quantity, but the quality of what the expansion of the golden age was. So, Islam moves to the east. There's attacks on the Hind in Hindustan. 26,000 Hindus die in one battle. Then in Armenia, the bishops and nobles invited the Muslims to have a debate. After the debate was over, the Muslims pushed everyone into the church and burned down on top of them. In Ephesus, 7,000 Greeks are enslaved. Next slide. There was an order for the, from the caliph, the ruler of Islam, to destroy all new churches. At Amorium, there was massive enslavement of Greeks, and the Egyptian Christians revolted over the jizya. The Copts, these are the Coptic Christians who are suffering today. So this is the beginning of their suffering. The jizya was the tax on the demi. Next slide. We're still in the Golden Age, the 10th century. In Thessalonica, 22,000 Greeks are enslaved. In Seville, Spain, the Christians are massacred. And then 30,000 churches were destroyed by the order of the Caliph in, in Egypt and Syria. Our next slide. 6,000 Jews of Morocco. By the way, we're still in the Golden Age. This is all Golden Age material. 6,000 Jews in Morocco are killed, hundreds in Cordoba are killed, 4,000 Jews in Granada are killed, and now we have the invasion of Georgia and Armenia. And in Hindustan, in one battle, 15,000 were killed and 500,000 were enslaved. Next slide. In Yemen, the persecution of the Jews goes on. They're given the order to convert or die. The Christians of Granada are deported to Morocco, and in India, Many cities are destroyed under the order, convert or die. 20,000 Hindu slaves were taken in one town. And in our next slide, 50,000 Hindu slaves are freed by conversion. Islam has a doctrine of slavery, and they view it as beneficial to, uh, to Allah because one, about the only way that a slave can get his freedom is to convert to Islam. So therefore, this is this mass conversion of Hindus. And a 20-year campaign created 400,000 new Muslims out of Hindus. The Buddhist monks are uh, butchered, nuns are raped, and then an intellectual tragedy happened, if this isn't tragic enough, in which the library at Nalanda, at that time the largest library in the world, it was a Buddhist library, and it took days to burn. In Damascus and Safid, there's mass murder of Christians. The Jews of Marrakesh are massacred. In Tabriz, there's forced conversion of Jews. And in our next slide, we're still in the Golden Age, by the way. This is golden. In our next slide, we're still in the Golden Age. In Cairo, there's more riots by the Coptic Christians, and churches are burned. Forced conversion of Jews in Tabriz. And Tamerlane kills as many Hindus as 90,000 in a day. In India, 30,000 are massacred in cold blood. And then Talik, one of the invaders, a Muslim, took 180,000 slaves. In the 15th century, we're finally over the Golden Age. But see if you can tell any difference from what's happening. Tamerlane in India devastates 70, 700 villages. And this is one of the great tragedies. Arab Christianity is being destroyed. The Nestorians and Jacobite Christians were annihilated. Most people don't know this, but Persia was half Christian. The Silk Route was half Christian. The Nestorian Church had missionaries in the court of China. Nobody knows this history. This is invisible. It's been suppressed. After 700 years of attacks, Islam finally destroyed and captured Constantinople. A relentless thing. One of the things that you come to appreciate when you study Islam is that it is infinitely patient. It doesn't matter if it happens this generation. There's another generation to come. For 700 years, they tried to take down Constantinople, and then they did. 16th century, the son of Camerlane destroys temples, and there's forced conversions. The generals, after that battle, built two towers of heads. They were so tall that a man on horseback couldn't see over them. The same thing happened in Spain. Towers of skulls were built so tall that a man could not see over them on horseback. Noble women, in, this is the Hindu noble women commit mass suicide to avoid sexual slavery and rape. The technical term for this is, whoops, 
on my slide. I've, I'm recovering from an error. Ah, there is a custom which evolved in which after the battle, if the Hindus lost, the, particularly the elite, women, the, the elite leaders' wives would commit mass suicide by throwing themselves into fire, the practice of sati. Have any of you heard of the concept or the name the Hindu Kush in Afghanistan? Hindu Kush means death place of the Hindus. So you can look on Google today and you can see the Hindu Kush. 17th century, more Jews are forced to convert in Yemen and Persia. There's forced conversion of Greece, Greek Christians. The Zoroastrian persecution is increased. One of the religions which is going to be annihilated is Zoroastrianism, which was in Persia. In India, 600,000 Hindus are murdered. In the 18th century, on the next slide, we, the Zoroastrian persecution becomes intense. The Jews of Jeddah, Arabia are expelled. The Jews of Morocco are massacred. And the Hindu persecution continues. And on our next slide, in the 19th century, more forced conversions, more massacres, and now then is the beginning of a tragedy which goes into modern times. 250,000 Armenian Christians are slaughtered in Turkey. Now then the Zoroastrian religion is now completely annihilated. Then in the 20th century, one million Armenians die. You were alive, some of you, when this happened. 